Okay, Chung Hong shareholders have approved that uh, ongoing mega restructuring plan that Li Ka Xing uh, drummed up. Chung Hong Hutchison shares right now. Let's uh, do them in succession. If all goes well, uh, trade will terminate on March 10th, and the newly merged uh, CK Hutchison Holdings will start trading on uh, March 18th. Both companies, as they stand right now, will be reporting today. Peter Churchhouse, author of the Churchhouse Letter, joins me to talk about this issue. Morning, Good morning, Bernie. Um, well, what do you think about the deal, first of all? I think it's terrific. I think uh, it's been a deal that uh, should have been done perhaps many years ago. Mm. And I think it's going to have uh, a whole range of benefits for shareholders. The three most important benefits, I think, uh, are firstly, it's going to remove the double discount factor that, uh, that prevails in the current structure right now. So stocks should trade closer to NAV. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, I think it's going to improve transparency and improve alignment of shareholder and investor interests. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and thirdly, it's going to give investors a much clearer choice. Do right. I invest in a, uh, one of the biggest property companies in the world right. or do I invest in a global conglomerate? Uh -huh. Yeah, no, I mean, the clarity is there. Mm. And even, you know, Mr. Lee himself insists that, you know, I mean, they're obviously Hong Kong being Hong Kong nowadays, you know, we, we worry about, you know, are the tycoons trying to abandon Hong Kong? Are they trying to diversify and, you know, taking the, pulling their loyalty out? He says, no, we're not doing that, even though the domicile moves to the Cayman Islands from Hong Kong. He says, I did this to unlock value. Like you said, he could have done this years ago. He, he could have done it years ago. Why not? And, 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 you know, this whole question about moving offshore, it's, it's just a complete smoke screen. It's just a, it's a, a facade. It's got, it's got nothing to do with it. This company's been diversifying globally for 25 years, uh -huh. nearly 30 years. Uh -huh. uh, it's been buying up ports. It's been buying up retail businesses. It's got 11,000 stores around the world. It's the biggest healthcare and beauty business in Europe. Mm -hmm. And it's all run by a guy from Hong Kong. People in Europe won't have a clue that that's the case. Mm -hmm. And the same with the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, it controls 20 to 30 percent of the water distribution, right. the gas distribution, electricity distribution. Yeah. People in the UK don't know that. And they don't care. Oh, no. uh, they just complain whenever they get their monthly bills, right? <laughs> of course. Essentially. Um, is there a... Um, so he's, uh, and, and honestly, Mr. Lee is not going to find the golf courses in the Cayman Islands that pleasant. There's only a handful of them, right? So he's not leaving. No, certainly not. If you look around, basically most Hong Kong listed companies uh, have their sort of corporate domicile either in Bermuda, Cayman or BVI. Right. Uh, so this is, this is nothing unusual. Mm -hmm. uh, companies have been doing this for 30 years, mm -hmm. uh, since before the talks on the handover to Hong Kong happened. Right. Jardine's got itself a bad reputation for doing it, but every other company right. in Hong Kong pretty much did the same thing. You know, me, you know there's, I don't know whether it's a conspiracy theory or it's just part of the whole uh, political diatribe and discussion that was inevitable post-Occupy. But, I mean, Occupy was, you know, essentially about the right to choose, you know, your leader, right? It was about yeah. uh, it was about uh, autonomy for Hong Kong. Now, they're now we're into what they call Occupy Two on a much much more micro scale. But you've seen the backlash against mainlanders, you know, in the yes. shopping malls in the new territories. And there's been plenty of stuff panned, probably because colonists have all the time in the world uh, here in Hong Kong, talking about how the oligopolies, uh, the, the 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 halcyon days are over, and that you know a handful of people are not going to be allowed to control so many interests like you know mr lee controls you know distilled water uh, you know orange juice uh, supermarkets to a large extent telcos that uh, sort of thing uh, and and gonna you know basically that's going to be picked apart and they're going to lose their influence the whole tycoon era is over do you buy into that i, I, I certainly don't buy into that but let's no? face it the chung kong group uh, basically hit its maximum threshold about 20 years ago. Mm. Basically, if you looked at it 20 years ago, uh, probably 20, 25% of the local economy was controlled uh, by, by this company, mm. and a large uh, share of the rest was controlled by Jardines. Mm -hmm. So there were two, there were two supermarket chains, yep. two drugstore chains, yep. three port operators, one cement uh, company, and so on and so forth, right through the mm -hmm. whole uh, society. Well, that hasn't changed really over that time, but these mm -hmm. companies have grown because they can't grow anymore in Hong Kong. No. So where have they grown? They've grown in China. They've grown in Europe. They've right. grown all around the rest of Asia. But do you think, see things happening in the future? Because, you know, whenever you go to, whenever, you know, the developers, you know, uh, open bids, you know, on a piece of land, when a piece of land becomes available, you know who's going to be there, right? It's going to be Sino. It's going to be, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to be a, yeah, a Chern Gong. Kong, it's going Henderson, to be, uh, Sun Kai. Yeah, Sun Hong Kai. All the old names. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe, you know, there, there has been talk about a way to maybe parcel out these things, make them smaller or allow 
more partnerships among like mid-sized, smaller developers to encourage more competition. Well, there's been there's been many discussions over on this subject over many years mm. uh, to actually try and release smaller parcels of land so that uh, some of the smaller players can actually bid. You're going to get, but, small, you're gonna get smaller projects. Yeah, that, that, exactly. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but that's not really great for for economies of scale. Mm. But you are seeing some of the big Chinese developers have actually picked up sites in Hong Kong mm. over the last couple of years. And you're also seeing some of the Singapore players. Yeah. You're seeing companies like Goodman out of Australia and New Zealand buying up industrial sites. You've seen a Capital Land picking up sites. So it's not an entirely uh, a one-way street. Yeah. But let's face it, this is a city of 7 million people. Yeah. We don't need 150 developers. Uh, <laughs> to, to, we don't need to be like China with, with 64,000 developers. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a small town. So I, I think we're not going to see a big uh, diversification here. It's always good to keep in mind that we are a city in the end. Absolutely. And, you know, what we call a chief executive, he's essentially a mayor in our legislature. We'd like to be a, a nation state, council. but we're not. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Peter, thank you. Great, buddy. Always appreciate it. Peter Churchhouse. Good to see you. And coming up on the other side of this, so as we approach the final segment of the show, I'll have uh, some of what he...